you're just one kid, what can you do to help fix global warming? There is so much kids like you can do to help fight climate change. After all, this is your planet and it is the only one that we've got. First of all, don't ever let anyone tell you that just because you're a kid, you can't make a difference. Because you can. Will you be the person who discovers how to make airplanes carbon neutral? Sarah Volz was just 17 when she won Intel's big science fair for figuring out a more efficient way to turn algae, that green stuff that grows in ponds, into biofuel. She ran her experiment in her room at home under her bed. And Evie Sobchak was only in eighth grade when she started to build her own project to convert algae to biofuel. It took her four years of experimenting in the garage, but she won one of the top prizes at the Intel Science Fair too. And today, companies are turning algae-based biofuel, the kinds that Sarah and Evie created, into jet fuel for airplanes. Who wouldn't want to fly across the ocean on a plane fueled by algae? I know I would. Will you work with governments, like Delaney Reynolds from Florida, who serves on the Rockefeller Foundation's 100 Resilient Cities Committee for Miami-Dade County? She also helped pass a new law that requires all the new homes in South Miami to install solar panels. Sarah, Evie, and Delany are all kids and they are doing amazing things. So you've decided that you wanna do something. How do you get started? There are so many ways to help. You could plan a cool experiment in your basement right now, or you could work with your school principal to figure out how to cut your school's carbon footprint. Or you could start talking to your local officials about changing the way things are done in your city or state or province. I can't give you a one-size-fits-all formula because every person's different. We all have our own strengths and abilities and we all live in different places. I would have loved to be one of those amazing teens turning algae into energy. But hands-on science experiments where you have to be really detailed and careful with tiny pieces of equipment and exact amounts of chemicals have never been my strength. Yes, I know I'm a scientist, but my experiments don't use test tubes. I run my climate models on these giant supercomputers and I'm really good at programming them. And my computer models tell us important things, like how climate's gonna change in the places where we live and what we can do to prepare for future risks from hurricanes, floods, and heat waves. I also like talking to people about why climate change matters, so I tend to do that a lot. And I like using the internet to reach people, so I make these videos. What do you enjoy doing? What are you good at? Spend some time thinking about that, maybe even jot it down. And then talk to your family, your friends, even your teachers to figure out how can I use these skills and abilities and interests that I have to make a difference? Even though there's no formula, I do have a couple of specific suggestions of what you could do. The first one is to work on reducing the amount of energy that we use and the amount of waste that we produce and helping our family or our school or our community do that too. This means a lot of little things like changing out the older inefficient light bulbs for new LEDs or refilling our water bottles instead of using disposable ones because small steps matter. Eating lower down the food chain, less meat, more veggies. Opening the windows instead of running the air conditioner. And it might also mean some big things too. Could you apply for money to put solar panels on the roof of your school? Or even if you live in a warm climate, just paint the roof white to save on air conditioning. Greenschools.net is a great resource for learning how to green your school and save money at the same time. In the last 10 years, Brevard Public Schools in Florida combined all kinds of big and little steps to save four and a half million dollars a year. That is a lot of money. The second thing we can do is talk to people about climate change because one of the biggest problems we have is that we don't think it matters or that there's anything we can do about it. So I'm inspired by people like 14-year-old Hannah Alper, who's from Toronto, like me. Since she was nine years old, she's been blogging about the environment and climate change and social justice on her website, callmehannah.ca. She says, no matter how young you are, you can make a difference and you can be the change. The third thing we can do is figure out cool new ways to fix the problem. 
Manasseh Mendy from Ohio was 13 when she invented a $5 machine to turn sunlight, wind, and rain into energy. Austin Wang from Vancouver won the Intel Science Fair just last year for his microbial fuel cells that convert sewage into fuel. And the Environmental Club at Lester Vaughn Secondary School in Barbados went one step further. Not only did they create their own biodiesel fuel from used vegetable oil, but then they went and sold it to people in their community. Lastly, the fourth thing we can do is lead the way. Just because you're a kid doesn't mean you don't have a voice. Did you know that 21 kids are suing the US federal government for their right to a stable climate? The case is going to trial this year. Here's why Avery McRae from Oregon joined the lawsuit. She says, I want my government to understand that climate change is real, changes are happening right now, and things aren't gonna get better on their own. Climate change should be the government's first priority. We can all make a difference in the places where we live. Cutting our carbon footprint, raising awareness, discovering cool new things, and standing up for what we know is important. The question isn't whether you can make a difference. You can. The only question is how. <laughs>